All right. Hi, everybody. It's Dr. Group with Global Healing, and I have a special guest today. His name is Brian Mirabella. He's a human performance specialist, a breatharian coach. I mean, basically, I, I really enjoy listening to, to Brian. I've watched him on YouTube. And, you know, it's this great awakening that we're going through and this transitioning of health that we're moving into. And and so many people having issues, mental issues, um, obesity is rampant, so many different diseases out there. The mainstream allopathic model, which treats the symptoms of disease instead of the root cause of disease. Um, I've been a big fan of Arnold Errett, Herbert Shelton from a long time ago, going back to the basics, letting nature heal you. I, I'm so sick of all this science, science, science stuff. It's like we have the the, the best we have the best natural healing substances made by God, made by nature, and within ourselves. We all have a self healing mechanism. He's the owner of Quantum Fit, uh, Fitness, and Brian, thank you so much for coming on today. Uh, tell us about yourself, how you got started, um, how you've conquered your health, and in, in what you do. Well, thank you, Dr. Group, for that wonderful introduction. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm really happy to be here and to be speaking with your listeners. And, um, you know, I have a really beautiful story to tell. Um, it's a good one. And it really, I really have turned into a purist in my life, which I never was one. But it took me being in monumental pain for most of my life. And then six years ago, I was told by an acupuncturist, that guys like me have a heart attack in their 60s and die. And I was floored because I thought I was already on the healing journey. I had already become vegan. I had already given up meat four years prior to that. But yet here was an acupuncturist telling me that my organs were failing. And I was only 47. I'm 52 now. So, of course, my journey goes back much further than that. I was... Uh, my mom smoked her whole pregnancy in 1969. She didn't breastfeed me. She bottle fed me. And when you bottle feed a, chi bottle, bottle feed, feed a child, you distort the muscles in their face. And you can create a jaw that isn't um, conducive to good breathing. And then because I lived with a smoker my whole life, my breathing organ, my respiratory organ was already compromised from the second I was conceived. And that led to, even though nobody would know it, it led to the organ failure that I, that I was told at 47 because my cells were under toxic chemical cytokine storm my whole life. And then I grew up on dairy. I grew up on pasta in an Italian household. I ate meat three times a day because I started wrestling at 14. So I was told that protein would build me strong muscles and bones. However, I was always sick. And in my world now, and I don't look at sickness as sickness. I look always now look at it as a detoxification response by the body. And I actually recently got sick and I'd like to talk about it, but I would like to I would like to talk about first that being sick as a child meant that my body was working correctly. The fact that I was sick all the time was because I lived with a smoker. So every time I got sick or had a sore throat, that's because my body was trying to get rid of the toxins. But at that point in time in the 70s and 80s, nobody knew that. I certainly didn't grow up learning that. But I look back on it and I'm like, well, my body was trying to get rid of the acids that I was accumulating. So it kept entering the detoxification response. It was supposed to happen. But of course, in the 70s and 80s, every time I got sick, what did my pediatrician do? He gave me antibiotics because my mother clamored for it. She wanted her son to be well. So a parent is going to clamor for a drug that helps the child get well. And in the meantime, what I really needed to be doing was not taking sulfur drugs. What I needed to do was stay home and rest, drink a lot of water, don't eat, allow my body to process all the pus and mucus that it was accumulating, 
and not put more sulfur drugs into my body that's gonna toxify my liver over time and my kidneys. And then if we fast forward to 47, and you get told something like that by a practice who my, my acupuncturist is a Qigong master. And he's been doing acupuncture his whole life. He's Chinese and he's a gastroenterologist. So I see him weekly too. So I've gotten this beautiful information about my own body. And then at, so uh, it's now 34 and a half months. So 34 and a half months ago, I became a fruitarian. And I entered into the mucusless diet because I read Professor Spira's book. I consider it to be my health Bible. Then I started reading all of Professor Eret's works, rational fasting, um, which I've done a lot of fasting. And, and um, when I started the fruitarian lifestyle, my acupuncturist said, I don't think you should do this. And I said, why not? He said, because you need protein. I said, Dr. Ming, I guess I never told you I'm already vegan right? So people- Wait, say, just, just, just to back up for a second, go ahead. Can you explain to everybody what a fruitarian diet is? Because there's, there's a lot of misinformation on the, on the internet. So what, what is your perfect example of a fruitarian diet? Uh, my fruitarian lifestyle is that I don't eat anything other than fruit throughout the day. So I subsist on fruits, berries, and melons. And I make sure that I don't mix genuses of fruits. So only melons with melons, berries with berries, citrus with citrus, stone fruit with stone fruit, because if you mix the two, it creates an acidic environment. So you don't do the nuts and seeds in there with the fruits at all? There are times where I feel like I need a little bit of food and I do eat, if I go down that route, I, would, I will eat nuts and seeds, but it's rare. Okay. It's actually, and the times where I feel it are usually when I'm fruit and hard, that's what I call it, fruiting hard. <laughs> My body is really pulling because that's what fruit does. It's astringent. So it pulls the acids out of your lymphatic system and you, you wake up the nerves. When the nerves start to clean out, you start to feel the pulling. But because I'm a wrestler, I understand that that's the, you know, again, the detoxification response. So there are times where it's a little bit too much for me and I will then go and have some nuts and seeds. Because it which, takes, which by the way, there are lots of seeds in fruits anyway. Right. So, <laughs> right. uh, okay, sorry. I just want to let everybody know that you know, because there's so many, you know, what's a fruitarian diet? Well, you know, which what diet are you on? So, yeah. Anyway, well, so it's 95 percent fruits, berries, and melons, and the other five percent for me is leafy greens, which I really don't. I don't feel as good when I eat salads anymore compared to when I eat purely fruit. So it's really rare for me to have anything other than fruits, berries, and melons. Okay. But if I did, the 5% would be nuts, seeds, and leafy greens. Because okay. leafy greens have a lot of nitrates in them, which is nitric oxide, which as a, a breath master instructor of oxygen advantage is also would be good. So I want to eat foods that support alkalinity and not support acidity. And um, that's kind of why I stay away from even nuts and seeds, just because anything other than fruit causes the body to secrete insulin. And fruit on its own goes in perfectly alkaline. It doesn't require any insulin to diffuse through the cell wall. So I'm always trying to keep myself as alkaline as possible. So I have a high threshold to carbon dioxide in terms of breathing, because as Professor Eric stated, we're air gas engines. So the less acidity I put in my body that I create in my body, the better circulation I'm gonna have, which means I'm gonna be able to breathe easier, which means my threshold to carbon dioxide is gonna be higher because I'm not trying to off gas the acids that are forming in my body, in my GI tract. So breathing and, and fruit and mucusless diet go hand in hand. Um, so uh, when I started on the fruitarian lifestyle, my acupuncturist said, I don't think you should do this. So I told him I've already been on marine phytoplankton for three years. So in my world, if I was lacking anything in a fruitarian diet, which I don't think you do, because there's all these essential amino acids, there's tons of fiber, the best fiber you could possibly eat, and it's got enough protein. So now I'm pretty heavily muscled. 
I mean, I'm only 145 pounds at five foot six, but if you look at my pictures, I'm pretty heavily muscled and I don't, I haven't eaten flesh in 10 years and I'm as healthy as an ox because the marine phytoplankton has all the essential amino acids. So that means that every day when I take my marine phytoplankton, I'm giving myself all the essential amino acids, which means I'm always making the perfect proteins. And then the epigenetic trigger of taking in the perfect protein, the epigenetic trigger tells my DNA to unravel and to manifest itself in the most positive expression of the signal being given, which is a perfect food, marine phytoplankton. It's a perfect food. It has all the essential fats, all the essential amino acids, all the vitamins, and almost all the minerals. So you could literally live on it. So um, I've been on that for years, and most people think I'm 39, right? They, they think I'm actually kind of young, and I'm, almost, and I'm 52 and a half now. So after being on the fruitarian diet, seeing my acupuncturist every week, he listens to your pulses. There's three pulses, liver, kidney, heart. So he looks at my tongue and he goes, wow, this diet's really working for you after a month. He said, you should stay on this and I'm learning from you. And I was like, awesome, Dr. Ming. So then eight months into it, he said to me, Brian, what you have done with your body is nothing short of remarkable. He said, when you came to me, I told you that your kidneys were failing and that you were in serious, you had serious issues. He said, not only have you reversed all of your kidney damage, but you are now strengthening your kidney chi energy and that's impossible to do. I've never seen it before in my career. Never seen that before. People with your kidney damage, I'm just trying to stop it from getting worse. So the fruit and the breathing that I do has been the catalyst to clean the acids out of my lymphatic system, to get my kidneys stimulated and working, and to get my adrenal glands firing so I can produce the neurotransmitters possible in order to get my body working on a synergistic, what I would call God level, which is do no harm, right? So then COVID happened two years ago. So then I didn't see him for eight more months. And when I went back to him, he looked at me and he said, wow, he said, you've gotten better. Are you still on your diet? And I said, yes. He said, you haven't had any work done? I said, nothing. So for the last eight months, you know, I was stuck in my house in New York City. So I ate as best as I could possibly eat. I didn't have to worry about going outside or, so I was just eating fruit the whole time. And I got better without getting any acupuncture. And he said, you are out of the woods. You're now strengthening and healing all of your organs and you're getting younger metabolically. And I was like, that's what I need to hear, right? To keep going because I feel so good. And then I get confirmation from a doctor of acupuncture that it's working. So that's pretty much my story. <laughs> yeah. that, that, you know, that's amazing. I was born in 1968 and I, I've talked to so many people that were born like in the mid sixties, all the way up through the seventies that had the same exact scenario. What you described was me exactly. Both of my mom and dads were heavy smokers, smoked mm -hmm. throughout the whole pregnancy. I was a bottle fed baby. I can wow. remember as a kid, like even in the car driving around till I was like 10 or 11, 12 years old, 13 years old, smoking in the car with the windows up. Like, I, I don't even know how much smoke I inhaled. And we had to repaint the walls in our house like once a year because they would turn yellow because of, of so much smoke and the, and, the, and the curtains and all that stuff would just turn yellow. So I, I bet a lot of people from that, from that era have had a lot of issues, especially with, you know, respiratory. So how did you get into, that's an amazing story, by the way. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. How did you get into breathing? What are the different types of breathing out there that you've studied? I know you've studied a lot of different types. And then can you tell us kind of what you've, how you've kind of managed that down into what, you, what you're teaching now? Yeah, thank you. Uh, you look great, by the way, and you have great hair, which means your liver is functioning well, your organs are very healthy, your eyes are really white, 
right? Your nervous system is doing very well. So you, you're, you're doing great, whatever you're doing. Um, I, I started my breathing journey with Wim Hof because, and it was this, this month, five years ago, and Wim Hof was getting very, very popular. So I started, you know, practicing his, I joined his course, online course. I started practicing the breathing. Then he wound up coming to New York City. So I did the level one training, but uh, I became superhuman and was able to be out in the cold. And five years ago, that January, we had the coldest January ever in New York. And it's on my Instagram. It was, I was out in the cold weather in shorts. It was minus 11 with the wind chill and I was in shorts and I was fine. But in terms of breathing, I still had massive amounts of joint pain, even though I was taking cold showers every day. I was riddled with joint pain and I wasn't feeling any better physically from doing his breathing because I was already suffering from a chronic state of hyperventilation because I've been an athlete my entire life and no one taught me how to breathe. So I've been heavily breathing my whole life plus my breathing apparatus nose and jaw was disrupted as a child. So then when I started doing Wim Hof breathing, it made me feel not so good. I wasn't feeling any better and I wasn't sleeping any better. However, the good thing about the Wim Hof breath is that if you're afflicted with a long-term issue, like potentially Lyme's disease, you could do this breathing technique over a period of time and you could create a really high alkalinity in the body that can starve the pathogens. So it works for that. It also will help you deal with the cold. However, if you're looking to create a functional breathing pattern in your life and increase your threshold to carbon dioxide, then it's absolutely the wrong way to go. So if people are hyperventilating, every single day, they're actually creating a dysfunctional breathing pattern, which is why I didn't feel any better. And I've now, I would consider it nursed. I've nursed a lot of Wim Hof disciples who have come over to my side and started to feel much better because I got them to stop hyperventilating. So in the Oxygen Advantage, I read the book four years ago this January. And, uh, I looked for Patrick to be teaching in America and he wasn't gonna be teaching in America uh, until Toronto of August of that year. So I said, wow, what am I gonna do in the meantime? I read the book, I don't really understand it because it was all the science that was over my head because I was never taught it. So he talked about Buteco, Professor Buteco, who he learned from and he had been a 15 year Buteco teacher. So I looked Buteco up online and they were doing courses. So that February, I entered into the beginner course for Buteco. And it was with uh, this older man in the UK who was 65 years old in fantastic shape. And I did the course for a month. And then we had a month off. And then I did the intermediate course with Martha, who's one of their top instructors who actually got to study with Professor Buteco before he passed away. Then we had a month off. Then I did the advanced course with Christopher Drake who studied with Professor Buteco for like 15 years. Christopher Drake has been a Buteco teacher for 30 years. And I got to study with him. And then I had a month off and then Patrick came to America and I signed up for the in-person back then. It was in person. Think about that, right? We did things in person. So I got to become Oxygen Advantage certified in August of 2018. So three and a little under three and a half years ago. And um, I'm also a Dr. Lois Laney restorative breathing coach, which is also a little over four years ago. So Wim Hof got me started. Then I became a Lois Laney. That's the cranial physiology side of breathing. So we look at the cranial nerves and we look about how to create a sequencing of the cranial nerves. So the body starts working better. We start breathing better. Then I did the Buteco courses. Then I became an OA certified instructor. And then three months ago, I've, I've been named uh, a master instructor for the Oxygen Advantage. 
So I've now been a breathing coach for four straight years, been doing breathing for five years. And now I've helped in the last two years, I've helped over 400 people recover their breathing. I work with people who have been, I don't want to say it, but injured over the last few months that have developed myocarditis and I've helped them recover from myocarditis, which is an inflammation around the heart due to the substances in the body that have created inflammation. And the breathing that I teach cultivates carbon dioxide, nitric oxide, and acetylcholine, which are all gasotransmitters that the body naturally synthesizes. So when you give the body the right signals, the body knows how to heal itself, which is self-reorganization. If you want to go even further, somebody like Yogananda, self-actualization. And Yogananda's guru from Autobiography of a Yogi was famous for only taking one breath a minute. So when you're only taking one breath a minute, your balance between carbon dioxide and oxygen is at such a high level that there's so much oxygen hitting your brain that you become self-actualized. You can become enlightened. So in, in our method, we teach the baseline breath. It's your threshold to carbon dioxide. So the higher threshold you have to carbon dioxide, the more oxygen you get to your neocortex and you start to wake up. You start to remove brain fog. You start to have conscious thoughts on a level that you've never had before and your whole life changes. All of a sudden you're no longer affected by stress. Stress happens, but it happens on the outside world. It doesn't happen on the inside world because we teach people through these breathing techniques to deal with stress. So instead of being triggered by stress and overwhelmed by it, you then find solutions to it. And then your inner world becomes your outer world. And then the outer world treats you with that law of attraction, that law of oneness of just nothing but beauty and joy. And then you walk around feeling grateful for everything you have because you're breathing well. And of course, if you're eating a mucusless diet, everything is, you know, even exponentially better from all of that. So when people come to you, do you, do you have a, a general program that you put them on as far as diet and breathing and, and different other different modalities? Yeah. So most people that come to me for training, they don't want to know about diet because they know what I do. And very few of them are interested, although I'm getting more now than ever because people don't want to give up cooked food. They don't realize it's an addiction. So we don't really start with the breath. I mean, the, uh, the food, we start with the breath when they come to me. Movement, which is fascial movements and breath. So I'm a movement coach as well. And um, then I try to encourage them to start with at least 16 hour intermittent fasting windows. And then I try to encourage them that to only eat twice a day. So I ask them to have a fruit meal for the first meal of the day. And then if they need to, as they transition away from a mucus diet, diet, then I ask them that their last meal be cooked vegetables at night. So I try to transition people because if you go right from meat to fruit, you can actually get sick, right? You need to transition. It's too much of a pulling sensation. So I do do that with people. I try to transition them down from eating cooked food slowly. And then with breathing, it's about assessing their baseline breath and then making them do specific exercises. So I work with people one-on-one. -on -one. I'm now doing small group coaching. So it's less expensive, obviously, but you work with a, a, a group of 10 people. And then I also, uh, I run an automated breathing program. So it's a 30 day program. Within 30 days, it teaches you everything you need to know about breathing but you have to do it on your own by watching the videos. Although after the eighth day, because it's seven days free. So I give out a lot of information for free in seven days. And then on the eighth day, if you decide to continue, you start to learn how to breathe. You get your first breathing practice. You get added to a private telegram group. So then we're connected for life. You can ask questions for life. And I want that, I encourage that. And then I do weekly live Zoom calls. So for everybody who's done the breathing program, 
I still make myself available where they can come on once a week and ask me questions. So it's live. So there is a little bit of live interaction. And then if people want to take it further, they do one-on-one, -on -one, they go enter into the small group coaching. And then some people like one-on-one. -on -one. So how long does it usually take people to learn the, the proper breathing technique? It takes four months of consistent training to retrain your respiratory center to not breathe hard, to breathe through the nose and to breathe gentle. So it's a good four month process. Even if you wanna exercise, you need four months to retrain your body to breathe through the nose while you exercise. And then if to become a really good breather, it's gonna take anywhere between six months to 18 months. It, I was a really poor breather, so it took me 18 months to really start to breathe better. So it's all, it depends, it's unique. It's definitely a unique process. Everyone's gonna be breathing differently and have different challenges. But I can train everybody from a severe asthmatic to somebody who's been injured recently with the cocktail, all the way up to Olympic level athletes. And I do have a lot of, uh, I have quite a few Olympic level athletes I train but I tailor it to the person's unique abilities to breathe. Got it. Yeah, I, I, we're, we're limited to what we can say, unfortunately, on YouTube because of the censorship. So thank you for not mentioning any of that. I've, I've gotten kicked off of pretty much every platform you can imagine and even got warned from a video I did on YouTube not too long ago. But uh, I believe it. the craziness in the world that we're that we're having to go through and that's why we're here to help as many people transition through this uh, that we can it's it's yeah. you know it's uh, something we've never had to really go through before but i'm glad that you're out there helping people um you mentioned protein earlier and this is something that people I, myself i haven't eaten meat in in over 18 years wow. mostly fruitarian um i i'm I'm along. I, I feel the best when I eat nothing but fruit. Um, even when I do mix some nuts and seeds in there, which which I'll do every now and then, and every now and then I'll have some cooked food as well. But yeah. it's nothing makes me feel as good and as energetic as just eating fruit. And I'll usually just eat whatever fruit I'm I'm going to eat. Just I'll eat nine oranges, and or you know for lunch I'll have like three apples or whatever. Um, lately I've been on a pomegranate, uh, kick just eating, you know, pomegranate, a lot of pomegranates, but, uh, you mentioned protein and this is like an ongoing question that it seems like never goes away. How do you answer people when they say, well, you know, what about, what about the protein? And I, you know, it's, I always tell them like the, the world's largest, strongest animal, the, the silverback gorilla lives on a, a pretty much a vegan diet and is, 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 is really, really strong and that we don't really need as much protein as people think we need. But I'd like to get your take on that, how you handle that question. Yeah, um, I tell, I teach people that you need a, all the essential amino acids to make the perfect proteins. So you don't need the proteins themselves, which are very hard to digest and break down. You need the building blocks that make the proteins. So you wanna get that from things like algae and marine phytoplankton and fruit, because fruit has enough. And you're right, you don't need a lot of protein in order to survive, because if we think about mother's milk, when you're first born, from the moment you come out and your mom and you latch onto your mom's breast, She's giving you in the first one to three days only, she's producing colostrum. And colostrum has human growth hormone in it and protein. And after that, it becomes breast milk. So after one to three days, it's breast milk. And if you look on PubMed and you look at the constituents of what mother's milk is, you'll see that it's 2.5% protein, it's 4% fat, and the rest of it is sugar, carbohydrates. The rest of it is sugar and water. So you are re being reared. You are growing on a carbohydrate rich environment of sugar water. So when you eat fruit, I lost 14 pounds initially, and now I've put 10 pounds of it back on. So still being on fruit, I still have plenty of muscle on my body and I don't ingest any type of proteins. So that's my answer.
What, what about your exercise program? Do you do any specific type of uh, weightlifting or what do you do to? Yeah, I gave up linear weightlifting a long time ago. I do progressive loading principle training. So I have a tool. I'm a, I'm a David Weck method coach. So the Weck method is all about movement. So I, I swing a club. It's a club like an old Neanderthal club. It's got a ball at the top of it and it's got beads in it. So it shakes. So I, when I train, I train my fascial tissue, which is the connective tissue that surrounds all the nerves, veins, arteries, and muscles. And when I train the connective tissue, I train the muscles. So I do things like starting and stopping because that's real life. You have to start and stop. Instead of bench pressing, which is a very slow movement, which doesn't correlate at all to actual athletics. Now, I'm not saying to people out there not to bench, but I am saying there are better ways to do it, like to throw a heavy medicine ball against a wall so you're moving, so your joint angles are always hitting different joint angles. So when I teach people how to work out, I teach them how to move with weights. So there's a tool called a Viper. It's long. It's cylindrical, VIPR, which is an acronym that stands for vitality, performance, and reconditioning. So instead of being a gym lifter, you want to be farmer strong, and you want to be able to move through space. You're never going to see a, a mom run over to her child who's in trouble and perform a perfect squat. <laughs> She's going to bend down with a rounded back and she's gonna pick up her child because that's how the body's designed to move. It transfers force through connective tissue. And when the connective tissue feels the force, it tells the muscle to contract and let go. Muscles are dumb. They only know two things, contract, relax. So it's very important to learn about fascia and to train fascial tissue. So that's how I teach people. I teach people how to move with weights through space so they can be a hunter gatherer. They can be a farmer and they don't get hurt because their tissue is resilient. And when you squat, you compress your spine, you compress your breathing act mechanism, and you basically compress your entire body over time, which is creating pressure on that air gas engine and that's why people shrink because they don't know how to overcome gravity. So as a fascial fitness expert, I teach people how to lengthen and strengthen tissue. And it's not with compressive movements. It's with lengthening movements like a gymnast in a way. Gymnasts are really big and strong and they don't lift weights. It's all about being on the bars and their muscles look that way and they don't go in the weight room. It's all about being on the bars. So I would want to be like a gymnast. So do you also teach that in, do you have your breath class and then you also have your movement class as a separate thing? Yeah, I don't have an online movement class. So I, I would teach people one-on-one -on -one online, but I don't have a particular automated class for movement yet, as of yet. And you said the WEC method, is that W-E-K? W-E-C-K. W-E-C-K, okay. Yeah, he's the inventor of the BOSU 20 years oh, ago. Oh, got it, okay. <laughs> he, he's literally brilliant. And, and then I also practice another modality called GOTA, which is an acronym, G-O-A-T-A, which is greatest of all time athletes. And there's a very specific biomechanical position that your body thrives in, in terms of your ankles, which are gyroscopes, your hips, which are gyroscopes, and your shoulders, which are gyroscopes. So if you train in a linear fashion, you don't train actual relative mo motion. You get stuck. So GOTA is greatest of all time athlete or greatest of all time actions at the joints. So between those two modalities, I feel like I have found the best way to teach people how to move better and to be efficient and not get hurt. So really, it's about not getting hurt. Most mm -hmm. people get hurt. 
So I don't want anyone to get hurt when I teach them how to move. Yeah. So do you do you do that every day or is that like a two or three times a week training regimen? You you can if you're learning the right way to move fascial tissue, you can work out every day, provided you're breathing correctly and you're removing the waste and not accruing lactic acid from overtraining, you should be able to train every day and then take one day off a week. But I don't, I don't train for more than 30 minutes. So I do my breathing exercises. Then I wake up my tissue with fascial movements, which takes about 15 minutes. And then I do 30 minutes of what I would consider some type of progressive weight training exercises. Do you take any supplements at all? All I eat is marine phytoplankton. I, would, I don't take any vitamins and minerals because I get them from my food. Yeah. Because if I take a pill, my body has to figure out, number one, how to break all that stuff down on the pill. Because how, your body doesn't, it doesn't compartmentalize the pill. It can't, it can't work well with isolated chemistry. But if you give it the right food, that's synergistic to your digestive system, it's going to be able to assimilate that and break it down and utilize it the way that God designed it. Now, I wish I could snap my fingers and just uh, everybody would, we could just eliminate man-made foods and pesticides and insecticides and all that other junk out there. Right. Uh, I, I've heard you talk a little bit about fasting too. Can you tell us like what your experience has been with dry fasting, water only fasting? Sure. Anything um, else? My, I started fasting about four years ago and uh, I did two, three day fasts. And then I chose in August of a, a very hot summer, I did an eight day water fast. So I drank 200 ounces of water every day. I wound up losing like 16 pounds, but it was really difficult. And since then, I now, I now only fast on the equinoxes and the solstice when the energies are highest in earth. So at the apex of the sun on every equinox and solstice, I do three day fasts. And this past summer, this past winter solstice, I did a three day 70, I did a 72 hour dry fast. So the idea of not drinking any water is that, well, number one, I had gone into it being a fruitarian. So I was already hydrated. I went to my acupuncturist 50 hours into my dry fast and he said, you're still hydrated. So that was a really great thing to hear because I eat my water. So it's not passing through me. It's actually being collected in the tissues at a much deeper level and I'm oxygenated. So after my 72 hour dry fast, when you dry fast, you will, your body immobilizes everything in the body. It starts to compartmentalize everything. So it immobilizes all your glycogen and it stores your glycogen because it knows that you're not eating in effect would mean you're dying in a way, right? So it's gonna immobilize and store the glycogen. But that's a really good thing because it teaches you how to stop overeating. So when you go back to food, especially if you're eating fruit, you're satiated from two oranges. And all of a sudden you don't need to eat as much because your body is, is immobilized the food and it's utilizing the food on a better level. It's not burning through it as fast, but you also immobilize all the toxins in your body. And this was the first time I made it 70, 72 hours. I did a 40 hour drive fast. Then I did a 46 hour drive fast. And this time I made 72. But as soon as I was done, I started not to feel my best. I didn't have a lot of energy. And then three days later, I started to get really sick. And this is just, this just happened. So I did dry fasting from the night of the 20th to the night of the 23rd, 72 hours. And then for three days, I didn't feel so great. Um, I went out. It was Christmas because I had to go out for Christmas Eve and Christmas dinner. And I only ate salads, it literally just salad. While everybody else ate, I was eating a salad. But I was out in the weather. I don't know what that meant, but I think the cold activated my detoxification response. 
and all the toxins that were immobilized in my interstitial spaces from, I'm sure from when I was a child, all the sulfur drugs, whatever I've put in my body started to come out and they started to be processed. And I actually had flu-like symptoms for five days. And I got, I don't wanna call it sick because I look at sick, if I'm sick, I'm dying. Sick means dying. The flu means the body is cleaning itself out. It's getting rid of all the metabolites. So my body, I had a fever. I also stopped eating. I went 20 hours every day just living on water. And then the only two foods I ate was I would have a half of a little, the mini watermelons that are in New York right now. I would eat a mini watermelon. And then 90 minutes later, I was eating oranges, navel oranges packed with vitamin C. So for four hours I ate, and then for 20 hours I water fasted. So I had to do another five days of pretty much water fasting. I didn't get out of bed. I didn't go to the doctor. I didn't even take my temperature because I knew that my body was detoxifying itself. So I allowed whatever it was to run its course. I now have natural immunity to whatever I had or didn't have. I look at it more like what I got rid of. And I feel really good right now. I've been better now for a week. And for the last week, I have felt better than I've ever felt because my body got rid of any excess toxins that it was holding on to. So in effect, I got my skin is really clear now too. I can I can tell that it was the best thing for me. So that flu, I haven't been, I haven't had the flu in 25 years. I don't even get sick, but my body needed to get rid of what it got rid of. And I honored the process and I didn't interrupt it. And I didn't suppress it with any over-the-counter stuff that you might take in order to do that. I allowed my body to go through the processes of healing because I'm a young man and I should be able to heal from something like that and become better for it. And I believe that that's what happened, but I'm glad I went through that experience too, because I have to say this, I felt the Holy spirit with me because I have an immune system that was graced to me by the gift of God. And I felt the Holy spirit with me. And I knew that I was going to be fine. I knew that I wasn't dying. I knew that my body was regulating itself and I was taken care of. I was protected because that's how I was designed by our creator to heal, to get better, not yeah. die. And if you do die, you're supposed to die of natural causes. That doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> that's an amazing story of just, you know, living in a state of hope and, and not a state of fear and just trusting that your body is going to take care of whatever it's going through and, and believing in that and not succumbing and running to the drugstore and, and putting a bunch of synthetic man-made stuff inside your system or running out to the doctor's office and getting on a bunch of, you know, toxic pharmaceuticals and, in most cases, your body will heal naturally within 12 to 14 days anyway. And, and you know, it's, I, that's why we're here to try to teach people that they have the ability to heal. They have the, the most powerful thing in the world is your body's own self-healing mechanism. And uh, that's, that's pretty much what we found out 25 years ago when we were doing research on the root cause of disease. Like all conditions, negative health conditions are caused by a toxic external environment and a toxic internal environment. It's really that simple. That simple. Um, so what do you, when you, do you actually consult with people that, I mean, I know you mentioned the one thing, which I think is a, is a huge thing that we're all going to be dealing with this year and beyond of, of helping people recover uh, from those you know, poisons that they're being exposed to, but are, do you also work with people like, um, that have different types of conditions and diseases? Um, yeah. Can you tell us like a really cool story about somebody not leaving their name out about, um, a good case and anecdotal evidence of, of someone who came to see you that, you watched and you you helped because it's always about the true definition of a doctor as a teacher not a prescriber and it's it's about te that's what i love about what you're doing is because you're actually teaching them 
how to become their own doctor, teaching them how to breathe, teaching them how to reactivate their body's own self-healing mechanism. You're not just like giving them a bunch of stuff and, uh, and, and pushing them out the door and say, oh yeah, come back and see me and let's see what you're doing. And, and you're actually educating them. That's, that's what I think is missing from a lot of practitioners is educating people on how to become their own practitioner. Yeah. Well, I have uh, quite a few stories, but the two that I'd like to tell, one is currently happening. Um, I actually am working with a woman who has stage three kidney disease and I'm getting her transitioning on the diet and she's losing weight. So that's really good. And then the other young man I'm working with, he's 24 and he was injured and he developed myocarditis and he heard about me on the Professor Spear podcast on the Mucusless Diet podcast and he hired me. And over these last eight weeks, he goes to cardiotherapy at the hospital and he wasn't making any progress. And when I started to teach him how to breathe better, how to cultivate carbon dioxide in the body, nitric oxide, acetylcholine, he started to have remarkable results in therapy. And now he's only got six sessions left and they're like, you're fine. You can go out on your own. And it's only been eight weeks that he's been breathing with me. And they're, they're floored at the therapy center of how well he's doing because he hadn't made any progress until he started to learn how to breathe better. So that's incredible. And then I have a, a veteran. She's 38. She's been breathing with me now for a year and a half. And when she first started breathing with me, she had only been out of the veterans hospital for a month. She was basically in a, in a psych ward. She was suffering from PTSD severely. They told her that they wanted to take out her thyroid that she was predisposed to have cancer. So she found me, she started working with me and I got her starting the, the transitional diet. So now she's pretty much a fruitarian. So she saved her thyroid. She got out of the mental hospital. She's now brilliant. She's become a Tony Blower Spear master coach in the last year and a half. So now she's teaching and empowering women to fight for themselves, to protect themselves. And she's a breathing coach now because she did what I did and she's thriving and she's brilliant. And she had lost her voice. When she first started breathing with me, she didn't even speak. And now she's on Instagram speaking, just these beautiful things come out of her all the time because she's increased her level of threshold to carbon dioxide, which got her getting oxygen to her brain and now her innate potentials are thriving. They're just coming out of her. She's just, she's just sparkling. Her skin, everything. She's lost like 35 pounds. She looks amazing. She's never felt better in her life. And she went back to the VA to, to share her story. And they obviously, they were like, well, we don't really have an answer for you, but thank God you're a help, right? So she did go back to the VA to share her story, to tell them like, you know, you, you had me on all these drugs. <laughs> you wanted to take out my thyroid and here I am and doing better than ever. And she did it through a mucusless diet and breathing. So uh, that's amazing. It's just, it, everything is in simplicity, really. Um, What's know. Professor Eretz's equation? His life equation, vitality equals power minus obstructions. And it's the minus obstructions part. If you stop putting obstructions in your body, your body will start to eliminate what it's holding on to. If, you're, if you remove the obstructions, your power is gonna go up. And if you have more power, you have more vitality. And I have specific breathing techniques that can determine what your vitality is like, just through the power of your own hum, whether or not you can hum loud or not. If you can't hum very loud, then you have low vitality, which means you have low power, which means you have a lot of obstructions in your interstitial spaces. So I teach everybody, like you said, I empower people to become their own best self, to be their own doctor, to feel their own interoceptive feelings, which is your eighth sense. It's a visceral sense to be able to sense your own organs, to know whether or not to 
you know, to go down the road, a specific road, to empower your own natural superhuman abilities that we all possess. Awesome. So uh, have you studied breatharianism? Do you think that we can survive on just air alone? Uh, absolutely. And there are people in India who are doing it, who haven't eaten for 60, 70 years. Most of them are found in India. I'm sure there are some in China. In America, uh, I only know of a couple of people who do go weeks and weeks and weeks without eating, but then they always go back to eating, but not a lot. Um, but it's, it's definitely possible, but that's a transition and a half. Like you would have to, you would have to start to, because I eat three, four times a day, but I'm eating fruit, but I would have to then go down to twice a day, be okay with living on twice a day food. And then eventually only eating once a day, but you got to get to the point where once a day feels good. And then when you do once a day, then you start to do what Professor Eret did and you start to do extended fasts. But that would take, from where I am now, it would probably take years, a few more years to get to a breatharian level. But yes, it's possible because the sun gives you everything you need. Roy G. Biv, all the frequencies of the sun correspond to the frequencies of every organ. So in effect, in actuality, you could live off of the sun's rays and the nitrogen and oxygen in the atmosphere, for sure. Yeah. I was fascinated with that like 15 years ago. I was, I was really studying deep the breatharianism and there, there are people living right now, maybe 60, 70,000 around the world. Wow. I mean, we identified these people 10, 15 years ago. I don't even know how many there are now. But there's, there's a lot of evidence that, that we don't need anything but just air to survive. And, and being in nature, you have pollen that you're breathing in. You have the water in the air that you're breathing in. And the so it's pretty fascinating. In the water, yeah. yeah. The algae that's in the water has all the proteins and minerals. Right. Your, yeah. your organs that are for digestion are redundant organs. They're not the main organs. Right? They're not the ones keeping you alive. And besides you're not sustaining life on the food you eat, you're sustaining life on the gas that it turns into. It's gas, it's not macronutrients of fat, protein, and carbohydrates, it's the gas that they break down into. So the food breaks down as gas by the bacteria living in your body, turns it into gas, and your blood is gas. So. Again, like Eric said, Professor Eric said, we're air gas engines. Mm -hmm. And at the blood level, it's all about gas. So removing the carbon monoxide, which is removing the obstructions, gives you more power and more vitality. Yeah, so Tesla have... talked about that too. Uh, Tesla's, uh, right. Tesla's understudy was a guy named Arthur Matthews. Most people don't know who Arthur Matthews is, but he came to Tesla when he was 16 years old. Tesla was really, really into health and uh, was really in the gaseous side of things. And Arthur wrote a book actually called The Wall of Light, which is, a, which is an amazing book that talks about oh. Tesla on the other side. And he talked about, you know, he, he was really working heavily into ozone and and different types of um, evaluating different types of gas exchanges that happen in the body. So he was really into that as well. And actually Tesla and Einstein both became vegetarians uh, later in their life because they realized that, and they both said that everything is nothing more than vibration and energy. That's, that's what it all boils down to. Well, I mean, thank you so much. Tell everybody how they can get in touch with you, your website, how they can go through the training courses. We'll actually post those links as well, but let everybody know how they can get in touch with you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Group. Well, my, my website, my business is called Quantum Fitness because everything is energy and oxygen carries a positive electron. So that's how you are alive because of the oxygen you're breathing in, gives you that energy. So I named it Quantum Fitness. So it's quantumfitness.org. My email is quantumfitnessorg at gmail. Uh, my Instagram is really a, a great calling card for me because I put all my stuff on Instagram and it's breathing with Brian, Brian with a Y. Um, if you go on my website, 
you can actually book a complimentary 15 minute breath consultation. So I will talk to anybody in the world for free for 15 minutes. And then I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. I offer the 30 day breathing program and I offer small group classes. And again, they can find me on Instagram or come to my website directly. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming on today, uh, telling your stories, educating us all about the benefits of breathing, the benefits of diet. So I uh, really appreciate it. Wish you all the best. I'm going to be probably going through your breathing course too. I'm, I'm really Please. interested in that. <laughs> Thanks. So, uh, so yeah, I'll be on the, be on the lookout for me contacting you, but anyway, yeah, have a great day. And it was, uh, it was great talking to you today. Thank you, Dr. Group. It was wonderful speaking with you. Thank you. Thank you.